Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Continuing with Imam al hajjawis famous text of Zad al uh, discussing the book of Hajj and Umrah. Last week we spoke about entering into Mecca and the issues pertaining to that, and then we went on to speaking about the beginning of the tawaf, how to do the tawaf, etc. And we've stopped with the author, he said, Fasl, he said, Section. And Sheikh Mansur he says, ذكر المؤلف هذا الفصل أحكام سعي والتحلل من العمرة وما يتعلق بها بهما. Um, the author mentions in this section rulings pertaining to the sa'i and freeing oneself from umrah, meaning freeing oneself from the ihram of umrah and issues pertaining to them both. So the author he says, ثم يستلم الحجر. إذا فرغ الطائف من ركعة الطواف Once the person is free from the two raka that he prays after finishing the seven circuits of tawaf فصنة له أن يعود إلى الحجر الأسود ويستلمه بيمينه Then the sunnah is that after having prayed those two raka then the person goes back to the black stone and he touches it with his right hand and kisses it والدليل فعل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم the evidence of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم كما ورد في صفة حجة النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من حديث جابر and it's found in Sahih Muslim from the Hadith of Jabir that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did so وذكر ترمذي and Imam ترمذي he says أن عمل أهل العلم أن كل طواف بعده سعي that the actions that the people of knowledge are upon is that after every طواف when there is a سعي after the طواف فيسن أن يعود إلى الحجر فيستلمه إن أمكن. Then it's sunnah that the person returns to the black stone and touches it with his hand if he is able to do so. لأن الطواف مبدوء بالاستلام. Because the tawaf began with touching the black stone. فكذلك السعي يبدأ بالاستلام. Likewise, also the sa'i should start with the touching of the black stone. بخلاف ما إذا لم يكن بعده سعي. But not if there is no sa'i after the tawaf. And then you wouldn't go back to the black stone after, after praying the two raka'at that you prayed after the tawaf. The author he says, وَيَخْرُجُ إِلَى صَفَى مِنْ بَابِهِ And the one who is making the umrah, he goes to Safa from its door. Sheikh Mansur says, وَكَانَ هُنَاكُمْ بَابٌ يَخْرُجْ إِلَى الْمَسْعَى مِنْ جَهَةِ الصَّفَى There used to be a door wherein the people, they would go through that door in order to get to the mas'a and to get to the place where you do the walking and running between Safa and Marwa. فَيَقُولُ المؤلف, So the author said, إِنَّهُ يُسْتَحَبُ أَنْ يَخْرُجْ مَعَهُ الْإِنسَانِ That it's recommended for the person to go through that door to the mas'a, to the place of Safa and Marwa, if possible. However, this door is not there anymore. وَالدَّلِيلُ أَنَّ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ خَرَجَ مَعَهُ and the evidence is that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he himself did so. فَيَرْقَاهُ حَتَّى يَرَى الْبَيْتَ The author he says, then the person, he climbs upon Safa until he can see the house, meaning the Kaaba. Mansur says, Sheikh Mansur, يَسُنْ لِمَنْ أَرَادَ سَعِيَ مُور It's recommended in Sunnah for the one who wants to do the Sa'i, uh, a variety of matters. The first of them, and يَسْعَدْ عَلَى Safa that he climbs upon Safa لِفَعْلِهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وسلم, because this is what the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did فَقَدْ وَرَدَ فِي صِفَّةِ حَجِّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم and جَابِر in Sahih Muslim that it's reported on the description of the Hajj of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم from جَابِر رضي الله عنه in Sahih Muslim فَبَدَأَ بِالصَفَى فَرَقِيَ عَلَيْهِ that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم started with Safa and he climbed upon it the second matter and yaqra in the su'udihi that the person recites when climbing Safa, uh, the Mount Safa, the following verse from Surah Al-Baqarah. Inna as-Safa wal-Marwata min sha'airi Allah fa man hajj al-bayta wa a'tamara fa la junaha alayhi an yatawwafa bihima wa man tatawwa khayran fa inna Allah shakirun alim. That verse is found in Surah Al-Baqarah. So the person who wants to do the Umrah or the Hajj should memorize this verse so that they can implement this Sunnah when climbing upon Mount Safa. ثُمَّ يَقُولُوا أَبْدَأُوا بِمَا بَدَأَ اللَّهُ بِهِ And then the person, he says, as it mentioned in Sahih Muslim, I begin with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began with. And the fourth matter, وَيْسَسْتَقْبِلُوا الْقِبْلَةِ That the person, he faces the Qibla. 
طيب the author he says ويكبر ثلاثا ويقول ما ورد that the person when he's on Safa and he's facing the Qibla he makes the Kabir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala three times and he says the following Shaykh Mansour says and يكبر ثلاثا لحديث جابر فاستقبل القبلة فوحد الله وكبره قال مثل هذا ثلاث مرات so in Sahih Muslim the hadith of Jabir the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam faced the Qibla فوحد الله he said لا إله إلا الله وكبره and he made the takbir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he said this three times يقول ما ورد وهو تحليل المعروف الوارد في الحديث جابر the person says that which is reported and that comes in the hadith of Jabir رضي الله عنه where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير لا إله إلا الله وحده أنجز وعده ونصر عبده وهزم الأحزاب وحده وطريقة ذلك شيخ منصور explains that the way to do this all with the takbir and the, um, the saying of this dua أن يحلل ثم يدعو بدعاء يصن أن يكون كثيرا that the person he makes this لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له to the end of it and then he makes a dua after having said that and it's sunnah that the dua should be a long dua ثم يعود فيحلل and then again he returns to saying this dua ثم يدعو and then again he says a long dua ثم يحلل and then again for a third time he says this long dua ثم يمضي but after the third time he doesn't make dua he leaves and he moves on to uh, marwa فيكرر تهليل ثلاث مرات يدعو بينهما بالدعاء so he, re- he repeats the takbir, he repeats the tahleel, the la ilaha illallah, uh, three times, making dua between each of them. And on the third time, there's no dua made after the third. وَقَدْ قَالَ النَّافِعًا دُعَاءِ إِبْلِ عُمَرِ فِي هَذَا الْمَوْضِعِ Nafi' rahmatullah alayhi, he said about the dua of Ibn Umar, رضي الله عنهما, in this situation, he said, وَيَدْعُ دُعَاءً كَثِيرًا That he used to make a long dua, lots of dua. حَتَّى إِنَّهُ لَيُمِلُّنَا وَإِنَّ لَشَبَابِ To the extent that he would keep making dua, that we would get tired and fed up and bored from it, even though we were young. And this was reported by Imam Ibn Qadama in his Al-Mughni, the third volume, page 355. The author, he says, ثُمَّ يَنْزِلُ مَاشِيًا إِلَى الْعَلَمَ الْأَوَّلِ then the person, he descends from Mount Safa and he walks to the first flag. In the old times, there used to be a flag. And then between the first flag and to the next flag, he would uh, run as fast as he's able to do so. And the evidence for the fact that the person should run between these two points is the hadith of Hubayba bint Abi Tajara. أنها رأت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يسعى that she saw the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم making the sa'i يدور به إزاره من شدة سعي that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم's إزار was following him and going around him because he was making the sa'i so fast وهو يقول لأصحابه and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was saying to the companions اسعوا فإن الله كتب عليكم سعيا Make the sa'i fast, be, be quick, because verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written this fast paced running and walking upon you. And this hadith is in the hadith of Imam Ahmad, in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad. So nowadays there is a green light to show that when the beginning of the running starts and when the ending of the running starts, we, when you are doing the sa'i, the walking and the running between Safa and Marwa. ثم يمشي Then the person, after having done the running part, he walks. وَيَرْقَعَ الْمَرْوَةَ And then he climbs upon the Mount Marwa. وَيَقُولُ مَا قَالَهُ عَلَى الصَّفَى And then he does as he did. He, he speaks that which he spoke on the mountain of Safa. ثُمَّ يَنْزِلُ And then he comes down after having done that. فَيَمْشِ فِي مَوْضِئِ مَشِّهِ And he walks again in the place of walking. وَيَسْعَ فِي مَوْضِئِ سَعِهِ إِلَى صَفَى And he runs at the points where he's supposed to be running on his way to Safa. يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ سَبْعًا And he does this seven times. Shaykh Mansour, he said, إِذَا تَعَدَّ سَاءِي الْعَلَمَ الْأَخْضَرْ مَشْيًا When the person passes the flag, uh, the green flag, walking, حَتَّى يَرْقَى الْمَرْوَى Until he climbs الْمَرْوَى وَيُسْتَحَبْ لَهُ سَعُودُهَا And it's recommended that the person, he climbs the mount 
of uh, Marwa. Wala yajib, but this is not obligatory upon him. This is not obligatory upon him. وَيَفْعَلُوا وَيَقُولُوا مِثْلَ مَا فَعَلَ وَقَالَ عَلَى صَفَى And he says and he does similar to that which he did when he was on the Mount Safa. ثُمَّ يَنْزِلُ مَاشِيًا And then again he comes down and he walks. حَتَّى يَأْتِي الْعَلَمَ الْأَخْضَرِ Until he comes to the green flag. فَيَسْعَى And thereupon he starts to run because that's the point where he should be running from. وَحَاكَذَا سَبْعَةَ أَشْوَاتِ And like this he will do seven times the walking and the running between the mountains. Uh, the ulama, they mentioned Shah Shah Sheikh um, Sami ibn Abd al-Rahman and Abhani in his explanation that the running is for men only and also is not recommended for the men or women to climb, for, it's, not, it's not recommended for the women to climb uh, Safa or Marwa. So the running is only for the men and it's not recommended for the women to climb the mountains of Safa or Marwa. And we have the hadith collected by Imam Dara Qutni from Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma where he said لا تصعد المرأة فوق صفا والمروة that the woman she shouldn't climb upon the mount of Safa or Marwa ولا ترفع صوتها بالتلبية nor should she raise her voice when she is making the talbiya لبيك اللهم لبيك طيب the author may Allah have mercy upon him he says ذهابه سعية his going is considered as one سعي and his coming back from Safa, from Marwa, is considered as being one Sa'i. فَإِنْ بَدَأَ بِالْمَرْوَةِ سَقَطَ الْشَوْتُ الْأَوَّلِ But if he begins with Marwa, then, the, then this lap will have been considered as being void. طيب. If he begins with Marwa instead of Safa. Sheikh Sami Suqair, in his explanation of Rawd al-Murbi'ah, Hafidhullah, he had the following important, important comment. He said, وَالظَّاهِرُ كَلَامِهِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهِ The apparent of the author's speech is وَلَوْ كَانَ عَامِدًا That even if the person done this intentionally, that yani, all, the, all that is upon him, that if he started from Marwa instead of Safa, then all that is upon him is that his one uh, lap is void. فَلَوْ تَعَمَّدَ أَنْ يَبْدَأَ بِالْمَرْوَةِ سَقَطَ أَحَدَ شَوْتِ وَحَادَ فِيهِ نَذَرْ But the Shaykh, he said, but in this there is, yani there is um, doubt, a person should look into it more. فَالصُّعَابْ أَنَّهُ لَوْ تَعَمَّدَ ذَلِكَ بَطَلَ سَعْيُهُ Whereas the reality is, and the correct uh, state is, that if the person did this intentionally, starting from Marwa instead of Safa, then his whole Sa'i, his whole act of worship, that Sa'i, is going to be invalid. لِأَنَّ هَذَا سَعِي لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Because this Sa'i is not upon the way of the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَقَدْ قَالَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ And the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said clearly مَنْ عَمَلَ عَمِلًا لَيْسَ عَلَيْهِ أَمْرُنَا فَهُوَ رَدْ Whoever does an action not on the way in which we have established it, then his action is going to be rejected. فَهَذَا مُتَلَاعِبْ So this person who starts intentionally from Marwa, he's mutalaib, he's playing with the deen. وَهُنَاكَ فَرْقٌ بَيْنَ الْإِنسَانِ بَدَأَ بِالْمَرْوَةِ جَهْلًا أَوْ نِسْيَانًا And there's a great difference between the one who starts with Marwa uh, out of forgetfulness or out of ignorance. وَبَيْنَ مَنْ يَتَعَمَّدُ ذَلِكَ And between the one who does that intentionally. لِأَنَّ الثَّانِي فِيهِ نَوْ إِسْتَهْزَاءَ وَسُخْرِيَةَ Whereas for the second person, the one who did it intentionally to start at the wrong mountain, then this person is ridiculing the deen and making fun in the religion which is not allowed, of course. Dothi, he said, وَتُسَنُّ فِيهِ أَطْحَارَ It's sunnah and it's recommended that the person when he's making the sa'i, he has tahara from hadith al-asghar, that he's in the state of wudu. Sheikh Masoor says, هُنَاكَ أَمُورٌ تَسُنُّ فِي سَعِي وَلَا تَجِبْ There are some matters which are recommended in the sa'i, but they are not obligatory. The first of them, أَطْحَارَةُ مِنَ الْحَدِثِ وَمِنَ النَّجِسِ To be purified from the state of hadith and from najasa, impurities. فَلَوْ سَعَى مُحْدِثًا جَازَ وَصَحَّ سَعْيُهُ So if the person did the sa'i whilst he was in a state of uh, hadith, whilst he was muhdith, then his sa'i would be uh, legally valid for him and it would be correct. Because in the hadith of Bukhari Muslim, the evidence is that Aisha radiallahu anha was told by the Prophet sallallahu when she was experiencing her menstrual cycle, if Ali ma yaf'al al-haju ghayra alla tatufi bil bayt hatta tathuri. Do everything that the person does in hajj, except you don't make tawaf around the Kaaba until you become purified. Wa mimma yaf'al al-haju asa'i, Sheikh Mansour says, and from that which the 
the Hajji he does is that from the actions which the Hajji is supposed to do is that he's supposed to make Sa'i. فَلَمْ يَشْتَرِطُ لَهُ الطَّهَارَ مِنَ الْحَدَّثِ وَلَا النَّجِسِ And the hadith allowed, or the hadith shows that it's not obligatory, it's not conditional for the Hajj when he's making Sa'i that he has to have Tahara from Hadith on Najasa. وَلَوْ شَرَعَ وَتَمَّ سَعِي مُتَطَحِرًا فَهَذَا أَكْمَلْ وَأَفْضَلْ However, if the person does it in the state of Tahara, then this is more complete and it is better. وَالسِّتَارَةُ And to be, um, to have the aura covered. مِمَّا يُسْتَحِبُّ فِي سَعِي From that which is recommended in the Sa'i, سَتْرُ الْأَوْرَى is that the aura be covered. فَلَوْ سَعَى وَقَدْ بَدَأَ شَيْءٌ مِنْ أَوْرَتِهِ فَسَعِيهُ صَحِي so if something was to be apparent from his aura whilst he was making the sa'i, then his, then his action, the sa'i, will still be correct. Well, and the illa for that, the reason, because tahara, because purification was not given as a condition, and it is more severe, or is more important to be as a condition. So he's saying that if if purification was not there as a condition. Even though it's more important for purification to be there's a condition, فمن باب الأولى أنه لا يشترط سطر الأورا. Then more so, it's not uh, a condition that the aura be covered because tahara was not a condition, and that is more important than covering the aura. Therefore, from باب الأولى, therefore uh, the aura is not also a condition to be covered in the sa'i. ولا يعني هذا, but this of course does not mean. أنه يتساهل في سطر عورة حال سعي that the person takes it easy with regards to covering his aura whilst making the سعي بل يجب تغطيتها but rather it's obligatory that he covers it للعمومات في ذلك due to the other general evidences pertaining to that لكنه ليس له ارتباط بسعي but it's not connected as a condition to the سعي فلو خرج من عورته شيء أثناء سعي فسعيه صحي so if something was to be exposed from his aura whilst he's doing the sa'i, then his sa'i will be correct. So in kana muta'amidan aw jahilan aw nasin, whether the person did it intentionally, whether the person was ignorant, or whether the person did that forgetfully, meaning expose his aura. Um, the Shaykh, the author, may have mercy upon him, he says the next thing, wal mu'alatu, from the recommended things is mu'alat. Mu'alat is the continuity of the act of worship that is not a break, a large break in terms of time between the acts of worship. He's referring to here as Sheikh Mansur says, Al Mu'alatu Bain Ashwat Sa'i, meaning that between the laps of the Sa'i, the, the laps going back and forth of the Sa'i, there shouldn't be any break. That the person should be continual between these laps. And he shouldn't break these laps. And that is as Qiyas upon the Tawaf making uh, analogy upon the tawaf. وَقَدْ قَرَّ الْمُؤَلِّفُ هُنَّ أَنَّ الْمُوَاتِ سُنَّةِ So the uh, Mu'allif, the author, he says that Mu'alat is Sunnah وَلَيْسَتْ بِالشَّرْطِ and is not a condition. وَحَادِهِ رِوَاتٌ أَنْ أَحْمَدٍ And this is one of the narrations of Imam Ahmad. اختارها ابن قدامة And this is the one that ابن قدامة المقتسي the Imam he chose. والمشهور من المذهب and the famous opinion from the Madhab أن المُوَالَات في سعي واجبة that the موالات that the continuity in the سعي is obligatory. شيخ مطلق جاسر شيخ مطلق جاسر حفظه الله تعالى in his explanation he says the سنية the سنة that is being referred to here of موالات is between the طواف and the سعي meaning that as soon as somebody has finished the طواف and the matters pertaining to the طواف then he should go on and he should complete the سعي and Allah سبحانه وتعالى knows best. ثم إن كان متمتعا لا حد يمعه قصر من شعره وتحلل then once the person has finished the sa'i if he is متمتعا he's doing the hajj tamattع and he doesn't have his hadi his sacrificial animal with him قصر then he cuts his hair وتحلل and then he's free from the state of ihram until the uh, rituals of hajj they start Sheikh Mansour he said إذا كان الذي فرغ من سعي متمتعا if the one who finished the sa'i is mutamatti'an walam yasqi al-hadi and he doesn't have his sacrificial animal with him fa'innahu yuqassiru sha'rahu aw yahliqhu then verily he cuts his hair or he shaves it wa yatahallal min thiyabihi and he's then able to remove his um, ihram li'anna umratahu intahat because verily his umrah has now 
been completed. وَلَمْ يَسْقِي الْحَدِي And he didn't bring the hadi with him. فَإِنْ قِيلْ Sheikh Mansur, he poses a question, if it said, لِمَا قَالَ الْمُصَنِّفِ Why did the author say قَصَرَ وَلَمْ يَقُلْ حَلْقِ Why did the author say that he shortens his hair and he didn't say to cut his hair? Question to yourselves. Why did the author say at this point to shorten your hair and he didn't say to actually shave the hair? طيب قيل للتنبيه على أن المسنون التقصير للحلق to allude to the fact that the sunnah is to shorten the hair and not to cut it لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم because the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم أمر في حديث ابن عمر that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم commanded in the hadith of ابن عمر which is in Bukhari and Muslim فقال وليقصر and the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said cut your hair والحكمة في ذلك and the wisdom in that توفير الحلق إلى الحج is that the shaving will take place when the person has finished his hajj. So you leave the majority of your hair for the time when you are going to shave it in the hajj. وَإِلَّا حَلَّ إِذَا حَجَّ And if this is not the situation, the one that the author described, then he will be free from his ihram when he makes hajj. Sheikh Mansur says, إِذَا كَانَ الْمُتَّمَتِّعَ قَدْ سَاقَ الْحَدِ If the one who is doing hajj tamatta' has brought with him his sacrificial animal. أو كان مفردا أو قارنا or he's doing حج إفراد أو قران فإنه لا يحل إلا إذا فرغ من الحج so then this person is not going to be removed from the state of إحرام until he has finished from the حج لأنه لا يحل حتى يبلغ الحج محله because verily the person is not free from the إحرام until the sacrificial animal reaches its place meaning slaughtered and it's uh, when it has been slaughtered. كما فعل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم as the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did والمتمتع the author says إذا شرع في الطواف قطع تلبية the متمتع when he enters into the tawaf when he starts doing the tawaf he will stop doing the talbiya he will stop saying the لبيك اللهم لبيك شيخ منصور المتمتع يقطع تلبية إذا شرع في طواف العمرة that the mutamatta he stops doing the talbiya when he starts the tawaf of umrah with the leel and the evidence as in the hadith of Abi Dawood and Tirmidhi of Ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma annahu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana yumsiku an talbiyati fi al-umrati idha stalam al-hajr that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stop doing the talbiya in the umrah when he would touch and kiss the black stone meaning at the beginning of the tawaf وَمَعْلُومٌ أَنَّهُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَسْتَلِمُ الْحَجْرَ فِي أَوْلِ طَوَافِهِ and it's known that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would touch the black stone in the beginning of his tawaf لأن تلبية هي إجابة للنداء هي إجابة للنداء because the تلبية لبيك اللهم لبيك is an answering to the call of one to perform the hajj وَإِذَا شَرَعَ فِي الْمَقْصُودِ إِنْ قَطَعَتْ أَتَلْبِيَ and when the person embarks and starts upon the act of worship then it means that the talbiyah should stop because he has responded to the act of worship. أما القارن والمفرد as for the قارن and the مفرد فلا يقطعان التلبية حتى يرمي جمرة العقبة كما سيأتي then they do not stop until they do in Hajj the throwing of the جمرة العقبة the throwing of the stones to the جمرة العقبة and this will come. Though he moves on, may Allah have mercy upon him. Now to the new chapter, باب صفة الحج وعمرة. The chapter pertaining to the description of the Hajj and the Umrah. He says, يُسَنُّ لِلْمُحَلِّينَ بِمَكَّةَ الْإِحْرَامِ بِالْحَجِّ يَوْمِ تَرْوِيَةَ It's recommended and it's sunnah for the person to re-enter into the state of Ihram or to put on the Ihram for Hajj on the Yawm of Tarwiyah. Sheikh Mansour, he says, المحلون يُسَنْ لَهُمْ أَنْ يَحْرِمُوا بِالْحَجِّ فِي يَوْمِ تَرْوِيَةَ It's sunnah for them to put on the Ihram, the Muhallun people, <coughs> They put on the ihram on Yawm Tarwiyah وهو Yawm Thamin and it is the 8th day فيلبسوا ثياب الاحرام So they put on the clothing of ihram ويدخلوا في النسك ويدخلوا في النسك and they enter into the state and they enter into the rites of the hajj والمحلون هم المتمتعون الذين حلوا من احرامهم and these people who are known as محلون they are the one who did the hajj tamatta the so they removed the ihram after having finished the Umrah. So they put on the ihram on Yawm Tarwiyah on the eighth day of, of uh, Dhul Hijjah. وَمِثْلُهُمْ أَهْلُ مَكَّةِ وَمَنْ جَاهَ And similar to them in ruling is the people of Mecca and those who are close to Mecca. فَكُلُّهُمْ يُعْتَبَرُونَ مُحَلِّينَ So all of them are considered as those who were not in the state of ihram. 
وَدَلِيلُ الْعَلَىٰ إِحْرَامِهِمْ بِثَامِنٍ And the evidence that they enter into the ihram on the eighth day is the hadith of Jabir in Sahih Muslim. حَتَّى إِذَا كَانَ يَوْمَ تَرْوِيَةِ وَجَعَلْنَا الْمَكَّةَ بِظَهْرٍ أَهْلَلْنَا بِالْحَجِّ Until it was the day of tarwiyah, meaning the eighth day, when we put Mecca behind our backs, we started into the rites of hajj. The author, he said, قَبْلَ زَوَالْ مِنْهَا uh, that this should be done before the zawal, before the uh, sun reaches the zenith on that day. A sunnah in yakunu ihramuhum fil yawmi thamin qabla zawal shams. The sunnah is that they do it before the zawal of the shams on the eighth day. What the lilu and the evidence in Sahih Muslim from Hadith of Jabir radiallahu anhu, falamma kana yawma tarwiyati tawajjahu ila mina. So when it was the day of tarwiya, the eighth day, they went forth to, to mina. فَأَحَلُّوا بِالْحَجِّ So they entered into the ihram of Hajj وَرَكِبَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ And the Prophet صلى الله rode his camel فَصَلَّ بِهَا الظُّهَرْ وَالْعَصْرُ وَالْمَغْرِبْ And he prayed الظُّهَرْ وَالْعَصْرُ وَالْمَغْرِبْ وَالْعِشَاءْ وَالْفَجْرْ فَفِيهِ أَنَّ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ قَبْلَ الظُّهَرْ إِلَى مِنَا And the evidence from the hadith is that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he went forth to Mina before Dhuhr so this means that he entered into the state of ihram on the eighth day before Mina, as the author was alluding to. The author, he says, min الحرم, And it's permissible for the person to put on his ihram from anywhere in the haram. Uh, Sheikh Mansour, he says, sunnah in yakuna makan al-ihram min Makkah. The sunnah is that the person puts his ihram on in Makkah. وَيَجُوزُ أَنْ يَحْرُمَ مِنْ بَقِيَةِ الْحَرَمِ And it's permissible for him to do other than Mecca as long as it's within the sanctuary of the Haram. وَلَوْ كَانَ خَارِجَ مَكَّةِ Even if it's outside of Mecca. وَذَلِكَ لِقَوْلِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم And that is due to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم saying حَتَّى أَحْلُ الْمَكَّةَ يُحِلُّونَ مِنْهَا Even the people of Mecca, they will make ihram from it. وَقَدْ, وقد أَحَلَّ أَصَحَابَةٌ مِنْ أَطْبَحْ كما في حديث جابر and the companions رضي الله عنهم they made uh, ihram from the place al abtah from the place al abtah as mentioned in the hadith of جابر وبيان هذا and the clarity of this أنه لو أحرم من جهات تعتبر داخل الحدود الحرم that if the person he enters into the ihram from any of the places which are considered within the sanctuaries of the haram ولكنها خارج مكة فيصح but this place is outside of Mecca, then his ihram is going to be valid as long as he's within the sanctuaries, sanctuary boundaries of the haram. The author he says, وَيَبِيتُ بِمِنَا And then the hajji, after having uh, left Mecca and in the state of ihram, he spends, he, st- he stays the night in Mina. Sheikh Mansour says, السُنَّةَ لَهُ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ أَنْ يَتَجِهَ إِلَى مِنَا The sunnah after that is that he goes on towards Mecca after getting into the state of Haram. He goes on towards Mina. فَيُصَلِّي فَيُصَلِّي بِهَا And then he prays there. كَمَا فَعْلَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهِ سَلَّمْ الظُّهْرُ وَالْعَصْرُ وَالْمَغْرِبُ وَالْإِشَاءُ He prays the Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib and Isha. وَفَجْرِ يَوْمَ عَرَفَ And Fajr on the day of Arafa وَيُبِيتُ بِمِنَا And he stays in Mina. So these prayers are joined but they are not shortened as mentioned by Sheikh Salih Al-Fawzan. وَلَوْ بَاتَ خَارْجَ مِنَا جَازْ وَلَا شَيْءَ لَيْهِ Sheikh Mansour says even if the person was to for whatever reason stay outside of the Mina sanctuary, the Mina area then this would be permissible for him and there would be no penalty upon him. فَإِذَا طَلَعَتَ شَمْسُ صَارَ إِلَى عَرَفَ And when the sun rises on the next day the person moves on to Arafa. تحجي, he moves on to Arafa. Sheikh Mansour إِذَا صَلَّ الْحَاجُ الْفَجْرِ يَوْمَ عَرَفَ جَلَسَ فِي مِنَا Once the person has prayed Fajr on the day of Arafah, he sits in Mina. فَإِذَا طَلَعَتَ الشَّمْسِ فَالسُنَّةَ إِنْ يَخْرُجْ حِينَهَا إِلَى عَرَفَةَ So when the sun has risen, then the sunnah is that the person moves on then to the place of Arafah. وَقَوْلُهُ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَكُلُّهَا مَوْقِفٌ إِلَّا بَطْنَ عُرَنَا And all of Arafah is a mawqif. All of Arafah is a place that you can stand for worship except بَطْنَ عُرَنَا وَادِي الْعُرَنَا Okay. This place is known as the Valley of Urana. As Sheikh Mansour, he says, Arafah kullaha mawqif. All of Arafah is mawqif. Aiyya makan waqafa fihi minha adza'ahu. So any place that the person stands in, as long as it's within the boundaries of Arafah, then that would be valid for him as the act of worship. Illa batna urana, except for the Valley of Urana. Fala yaqifu biha, then the person is not allowed to stand there. Wala waqafa biha lam yasih waqufuhu. And if he stood there as an act of worship, his standing would not be valid. The hadith of Collected by Imam Ahmed, 
of Jubair ibn Mut'am, he said, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Kullu Arafata Mawqifun. All of Arafah is a Mawqif, meaning all of Arafah is a place where you can stand. Wartafi'u al batni Urna. But make sure that you remove yourself from the value of Urna. Arafah now is demarcated by clear signs, uh, demarcating clearly what are the boundaries of Arafah. So a person is quite easy for him to know whether he's within the boundaries or not. The author he said, وَيُسَنْ أَنْ يَجْمَعْ بَيْنَ الظُّهْرِ وَالْعَصْرِ And it's recommended on the day of Arafah that the person he joins between Dhuhr and Asr. Mansur, Sheikh Mansur, he says, أَسُنَّ فِي عَرَفَةَ أَنْ يَجْمَعْ النَّاسِ فِيهَا بَيْنَ صَلَاتَيْ الظُّهْرِ وَالْعَصْرِ جَمَّ تَقْدِيمِ It's recommended and it's sunnah that the people, they join between Dhuhr and Asr on the day of Arafah, جَمَّ تَقْدِيمِ جَمَّ تَقْدِيمِ meaning that they do it in the early time. That Asr is prayed in the time of Dhuhr, not جَمَّ تَأْخِيرِ where Dhuhr is prayed in the time of Asr. لِفَعْلِ النَّبِي صلى الله عليه وسلم Due to the action of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and this is done in order that they can be freed up in order to have time to spend uh, doing lots and lots of dua and humbling themselves and making themselves poor in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh Amil Bahjat, he says, Hafidahullah, for those who live close by, the Mu'tamad position is that they don't make jam, that they don't join between the salawat. The author, he says, وَيَقِفْ رَاكِبًا and the person stands, it's sunnah that the person stands uh, whilst he's riding. Sheikh Mansur, Hayatul Waqif bi Arafa. The position of how the person stands in Arafa, Yajuzul insan and Yaqifa Mashian ay nazilan al ard. It's permissible for the person to stand whilst he is walking on his feet, or raqiban ala rahilatihi, or he can stand upon his riding beast or car of anything of that nature. وَقَدْ وَقَفَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ وسلم رَاكِبًا And verily the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he stood whilst he was riding his beast. بِمَعْنَى أَنَّهُ كَانَ رَاكِبًا عَلَى رَاحِلَتِهِ قَاعِدًا عَلَيْهَا وَلَيْسَ بِنَازِلٍ Meaning that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was, was doing this act of worship of being in the sanctuary of Arafah where you're supposed to stand and make dua to Allah Azza wa Jal and to implore him for your forgiveness and needs. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم did this whilst he was on his riding beast صلى الله عليه وسلم. The author, he says, in the Sakharat wa Jabli Rahma, at the rocks and the mount known as Mount Rahma, Mawtin al Wakuf, the place where you stand, and Yaqifa in the Jabal, as Falihi in the Sakharat, that the person stands at the bottom of the Mount Rahma where the rocks are. Wa Yajal wa Habl al Mashat, ay tariqahum al ladi yaslakunahum fi ramal. And the, the, the road or the way which is known as Habl al Mashat. It is uh, put in front of him. بين يديه ويستقبل القبلة and he faces the qibla. ودليل حديث جابر and the evidence is in the حديث جابر in Sahih Muslim. فجعل بطن ناقته القصوى إلى سخارات. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he brought his camel very close to the rocks. وجعل حبل مشات بين يديه and he made the pathway and the road which is now known as حبل مشات بين يديه in front of him was taqbal al qibla and he faced the qibla sallallahu alaihi wasallam wala shakka annahu idha kana fi hadhil mawdi zaham fatarkuhu awla and it's no doubt shaykh mansur says that if in this place at the bottom of the mount and uh, facing makkah facing the qibla and um yani with habl mashat in front of you with that part with that road in front of you if this is extremely busy then it's better for you to leave wanting to be there la sima idha kana al insan mimman yaqtadi bihi Especially if the person is a group leader, so that the, he doesn't want to be, you know, um, hidden in the crowd. He should be standing out so his his people can follow him. And the Prophet said, as in the hadith in Sahih Muslim, I stood here, but all of Arafah is a mawqif. All of Arafah, Arafah is a place where you can stand. So it's totally permissible and virtuous to stand anywhere in Arafah. You don't have to be in the place that we described and also it's strange that a lot of people think that they have to climb Jabal Rahma, the Mount Rahma. that's not the case the Prophet ﷺ didn't climb it the Prophet ﷺ stood at the bottom of it as we described the author he says and the person in Al Arafa he makes as much dua as possible from that which has been narrated Ibn Khuzayma he mentions in the hadith of Jabir that the Prophet that it's mentioned in Allah the Prophet said, Inna Allah 
يَنْزِلُ إِسَمَاء فَيُبَاهِي بِهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven in a way that befits His majesty which is not understood by us but we believe in it because He mentioned it in many places that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He descends to the lowest heavens and He shows off to the malaika meaning He shows off His creation that are worshipping Him to the angels فَيَقُولْ أُنْظُرُوا إِلَىٰ إِبَادِي Look to my slaves أَتَوْنِي شُعْثًا غُبْرًا ضَاحِينَ مِن كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ Look at them, they came disheveled and their clothes in a mist and they came from every narrow mountain path أُشْهِدُكُمْ أَنِّي قَدْ غَفَرْتُ لَهُمْ I, be, I, I, I take you as witnesses, O angels, that I have forgiven them فَهُوَ يَوْمٌ تُرْجَى فِيهِ الْإِجَابَةِ So it is a day, Sheikh Mansour says, wherein the dua is hoped to be answered تُرْجَى فِيهِ الْإِجَابَةِ وَلِذَلِكَ أُسْتُحِبَّ لَهُ الْفِطْرِ يَوْمَئِذٍ And due to that, it's recommended that the person doesn't fast on this day لِيَتَّقَوَّ عَلَى الدُّعَى So that the person can be strong, that he can have lots of energy to spend in making dua وَلِأَجْلِ ذَلِكَ فَلْيَنْبَغِ لِلْحَاجِ أَنْ يَسْتَغِلَّ ذَلِكَ الْمَوْقِفِ And due to this, it's imperative that the one who's making hajj, when he's in this area of Arafah and at that time that he uses all of his time to make dua and to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلَا يُفَرِّتُ وَلَا بِيَسِيرٍ مِنْهُ and he doesn't waste any of his time doesn't be negligent in anything pertaining to the acts of worship on Arafah وَإِنْ يَجْتَهِدَا فِي الدُّعَى and that he increases and he strives so hard in making dua وَالتَّذَلَّلْ وَالتَّذَلَّلْ وَالتَّذَرَّعْ and in humbling himself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and groveling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَعَلَمْ نَوْ أَنَّهُ لَمْ تَرِدْ دَعْوَاتْ مُعَيِّنَا يَقُولُهَا لِنْسَانِ فِي عَرَفَةً that there has not been a specific dua Shaykh Mansour says which is narrated that you say on Arafah there's no specific dua لكن ورد في however in the Musnad of Imam Ahmad and the Sunnah of Tirmidhi the following Mentioned by Amr ibn Shu'ayb and Abihi, that Amr ibn Shu'ayb, he narrates from his father and Jaddi from his grandfather, radiyallahu anhum, marfu'an, that the Prophet said, خَيْرُ الدُّعَاءِ دُعَاءَ يَوْمِ عرفة, that the best of the du'as is the du'a which is made on Arafah. وَخَيْرُ مَا قُلْتُ أَنَّ وَالنَّبِيُّونَ مِنْ قَبْلِ And the best that I have said and the, and the messengers before me is, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ لَهُ الْمُلْكُ وَلَهُ الْحَمْدُ وَهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ So this is a, a, a very important dua that the person says when they are there in Arafah and outside of Arafah on the day of Arafah. Question to yourselves, what is odd about this dua? Do you notice anything odd about this dua that I just mentioned? As compared to other duas that we know. طيب, what you'll find is that this dua, there's no asking. You're not asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything in it. And Shaykh Sami ibn Abd Rahman, he mentions, فَهَذَا فَمَا بِمَعْنَى الدُّعَى So this is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but with the meaning of dua. وَالْمَعْنَى أَنَّنِي أَثْنَيْتُ عَلَيْكَ And the meaning is that, O oh Allah Azza wa Jal, I have praised you and glorified you لِتَكْفِينِ حَاجَتِي So that you may fulfill my needs. فَهَذَا تَعْرِيدُ بِالدُّعَى So this is making dua without actually mentioning the wordings of dua. This is alluding to dua through the praise and extolling the virtues of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The author he says, وَمَنْ وَقَفَ وَلَوْ لَحْدَةً مِنْ فَجِّ يَوْمِ عَرَفَ And whoever stands in Arafah, even if it be for a moment, because standing in Arafah is a rukun of hajj. Without the standing in Arafah, your, your hajj is invalid. So whoever stands, even if it be momentarily, momentarily in Arafah, إِلَى فَجِرِ يَوْمِ النَّحَرِ Until Fajr from the day, uh, on the day of Eid, whoever stands from the legislated time of standing in, Fajr, in, standing in Arafah, until Fajr on the day, day of Eid, then his, uh, his, his Rukan is going to be accepted from him. His pillar of standing in Arafah is going to be accepted from him. Uh, of course, he has to be from those who are valid to be a person doing Hajj. So again, just uh, to conclude that, which was a bit gibberish there, whoever stands in Arafah doing that act of worship which is a rukun for him, which is a pillar for him. As long as he stood even momentarily from the time when it's allowed for you to stand on Arafah, which we'll discuss in a minute, in a minute until Fajr of the day of Eid, then his standing, his rukun will be valid for him. Sheikh Mansour, he says, أَمَّا وَقْتُ الْوَقُوفِ بِالْمُؤْتَبِرِ As for the time of standing in Arafah which is legally valid, فَمِنْ فَجْرِ يَوْمِ الْعَرَفَةِ إِلَى فَجْرِ يَوْمِ الْنَحْرِ So it's from the Fajr, the time, Fajr time of Yawm Arafah until Fajr 
يوم العيد إذا الأضحى يوم عيد النحر right so any time between then if a person stood even momentarily then his standing is going to be valid why because we have the hadith in Abi Dawood and Ahmed of Urwa ibn Mudris who said in the long hadith and towards the end the Prophet sallallahu said man adraka ma'ana hadi salah whoever catches this salah with us and it was the salah of Fajr on the day of Muzdalifa وَأَتَى عَرَفَاتِ And he came to Arafat قَبْلَ ذَلِكَ And he came to Arafat before that, meaning before the Salat al-Fajr لَيْلًا أَوْ نَحَارًا Whether it be during the day or the night فَقَدْ تَمَّ حَجُّهُ so For verily his Hajj has been complete وَقَدَى تَفَثَهُ And his Hajj has been complete وَشَاهِدُ قَوْلُهُ And the witness from the Hadith, the evidence from the Hadith is where the Prophet said أو نهار, or during the day والنهار يبدأ من طلوع الفجر and والنهار يبدأ من طلوع الفجر and the day begins from the sun rising from the time the sun has risen after fajr فبطلوعه يبدأ اليوم so during, from the sunrise the day starts فإذا وقف صاحبا مثلا انطبق عليه أنه وقف بعرفة في يوم عرفة فإذا وقف صباحا مثلا so if the person stands in the morning of يوم العرفة انطبق عليه أنه وقف بعرفة في يوم عرفة. Then the ruling is given that he has stood as a rukun, as the pillar of Hajj on the day of عرفة. Okay. So the author is saying, and as was explained in the hadith, that uh, as long as you stand from any time from from Fajr of يوم العرفة, meaning once the sun has risen, once the day has started, until Fajr of uh, يوم العيد. Then your standing is going to be valid. Ibn Taymiyyah has a second opinion in the madhab, which is للحاج, and يقف بعد الزوال, that it's preferable, it's better for the one who's making the hajj that he stands after the zawal of Yawm al Arafah, not before that. He stands, it's better that he stands after the zawal of Yawm al Arafah. Yeah, that he stands after the zawal Yawm al Arafah. The author he says, and the author he mentioned in this sentence that the person is from those who it's allowed for him to do Hajj or he is um, he has the valid criteria to be somebody who is doing Hajj Sheikh Mansour says Man huwa al lil Hajj wal wuquf bi Arafah who is the one who is um, you know qualified to stand in Hajj on Arafah huwa man jama'a iddata awsaf it is the one who gathers together a variety of matters and descriptions. Number one, أن يكون مسلم, that he should be a Muslim. Number two, محرما بالحج, that he should have been in the state of ihram with the intention of a hajj. Number three, لا يكون سكران, that he shouldn't be drunk. ولا مجنون, number four, he shouldn't be crazy. Number five, ولا مغمى عليه, nor should he be unconscious. Um, وإلا فلا. And if this is not the case, if he doesn't fit these descriptions, Sheikh Mansur says, إِذَا وَجَدَ كُلَّ مَا تَقَدَّمَ فَإِنَّهُ يَصِحْ وَقُوفَهُ If he fulfills these descriptions, all of them that have been mentioned, the five, then his standing in Arafah is going to be valid. أَمَّا إِذَا لَمْ يَقِفْ بِعَرَفَةِ Whereas if he didn't stand by in Arafah, or أَوَّقَفَ وَلَكِنْ فِي غَيْرِ الْوَقْتِ المعتبر, Or he stood in Arafah but outside of the times which were legislated, أو لم يكن من أحل الحج حين الوقوف فإنه لا يصح حجه. Or he stood in Arafah, but he wasn't one who had these five characteristics. Then he would not be from one whose Hajj is going to be valid, because his standing is not valid. والعلة and the reason أنه فاته الوقوف المعتد به. He has lost out and he has not fulfilled the the standing in Arafah which was legislated upon him in the correct way. The author he says, وَمَنْ وَقَفَ النَّهَارًا وَدَفَعَ قَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ And whoever stands during the day of Arafah and then he leaves before the sunset on the day of Arafah وَلَمْ يَعُدْ قَبْلَهُ فَعَلَيْهِ دَمْ But then he doesn't return to Arafah before sunset then this person has to pay a penalty, he has to sacrifice. وَمَنْ وَقَفَ لَيْلًا فَقَدْ and whoever stands in the night, meaning after Maghrib, on the day of Arafah, before the uh, Fajr of Eid, then this person doesn't have to pay the dam. This person doesn't have to pay a penalty. So Sheikh Mansur, he said, إِذَا وَقَفَ الْحَاجْ بِعَرَفَةِ فِي النَّهَارِ If the person stands in Arafah during the day, ثُمَّ نَفَرَ قَبْلَ الْغُرُوبِ Then the person leaves before the sunset. So this has two possibilities. Number one, أَلَّا يَعُودَ بَعْدَ الْغُرُوبِ That the person doesn't return 
before the sunset wala qabl al ghurub liyajlis hatta taghrib so that he may stay in arafa until the sun sets fa inna alayhi dhamman then verily this person in this situation has to pay the penalty wa dhalika li tarkihi al wajib and that is because he left out the obligatory action which is to stay in arafa until the sun sets lakin in kana dhalika li udhn kal jahl wa nahwihi However, if this was done due to ignorance, meaning that he left before Maghrib, or it was done uh, due to another reason that is permissible for him, then there is nothing upon him. The second situation in this scenario, and yet al الغروب, that the person leaves before the sunset, ثُمَّ يَعُودُ However, he comes back before the sunset. So he's left before Maghrib, but he comes back before the sun sets. لِيَرْجِعَ بَعْدَ الْغُرُوبِ أَوْ قَبْلَهُ وَيُدْرِكْهُ فِيهِ so he comes back and he catches the Maghrib, the sun setting. He's standing there and he catches the sun setting in uh, Arafah. فَلَا شَيْءَ عَلَيْهِ Then there's nothing upon him. وَذَلِكَ لِأَنَّهُ رَجَعَ وَجَمَعَ فِي وَقُوفِ بَيْنَ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّحَارِ And that is because he came and he joined between the standing of the day and the standing of the night, which is the evening having the sunset. So the wajib is that when the person gets there before the uh, when the person gets there before Maghrib, he has to stay until Maghrib. Okay, so he he joins between, so he catches uh, the act of worship of standing during the day and standing during the evening. Sheikh uh, Mutajasar he gives a bit more tawdih, he gives a bit more clarity to this. He says the rukun of standing is at least a moment between Fajr to Fajr, between the Fajr of Arafah, I mean the sunrise on Fajr of Arafah, until the Fajr of Yom Al Eid. That's the rukun, the pillar. Okay, it must be done at least one moment between the Fajr to Fajr. And the wajib is for the one who stands there before Maghrib is that he remains there till Maghrib. So if he didn't remain there until Maghrib, though he was there before Maghrib, then he's going to have to pay a penalty for missing out on that wajib. The one who stands after Maghrib, meaning that he only stands after Maghrib, then there is no wajib upon him, only the rukun, which is that he must stand at any given time between the Fajr to the Fajr. As mentioned by Sheikh Muqtalaq Jasr, Hafidullah. Tayyip. The author, he says, and this is the last thing we'll take today, ثُمَّ يَدْفَعُ بَعْدَ الْغُرُوبِ Then the person on the day of Arafah, after he stood there until Maghrib, he now leaves. And he makes his way to Muzdalifah. المُسْتَحَبْ أَنْ يَدْفَعُ النَّاسِ بَعْدَ غُرُوبِ شَمْسِ كَامِلًا مَعَ الدَّفْعِ الْإِمَامِ That the people, they follow their leader, their group leader, after, or they follow the Imam, after the sun has set on the day of Arafah. What the leel and the evidence is the action of the Prophet وسلم, as mentioned in the hadith of Jabir. فَلَمْ يَزَلْ صلى الله عليه وسلم وَاقِفًا حَتَّى غَرَبَتِ الشَّمْسِ So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم continued to stand on the day of Arafah until the, shun, until the sun set. وَذَهَبَتِ الصُفْرَةُ قَلِيلًا And then the yellowness of the sun, it went a little. حَتَّى غَابِ الْقُرْسِ Until the disk of the sun had been hidden on the horizon and that's when the Prophet ﷺ moved on to Muzdalifa which is where we will continue next week by Allah's permission inshallah anything which was correct was a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan I hope that as you develop in your Arabic language you will find that the translation between the Arabic to the English is beneficial for you inshallah and we ask Allah جل, to reward us immensely for this little act of worship uh, any questions then feel free I think I have a quick question here no questions may I reward you all Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh